Hello, my friends. It's time for another weekend reading vlog. Thanks for stopping my books and jams. I'm Krista. If you're new here, welcome. I'm glad you're here. Every other weekend I do a weekend reading vlog. And today is a very rainy Friday. And my little buddy and I are out for a walk. So we are out in the light rain, <laughs> which is getting a little harder as I speak. We might just make it to the corner. I thought we would try to go around the block, but it's kind of a gross day. <laughs> so I'm not gonna talk too much right now because I'm with the little dude, but I'll show you him because he's super cute. I can't show you his face, but I'll show you him and his umbrella. I brought him an umbrella today too, because I knew we would have to get outside. All right, I'll talk to you in a little while and give you a reading plan and weekend plan and all that jazz. What are you looking at? Are they still soft if they get wet? Whoa! It's a little windy. All right, let's keep walking. I want to hear <laughs> Hi friends, it is now 2.15. Um, and my little buddy has about 15 more minutes of nap time. I am sitting on the floor today because the last few times I've been sitting on the couch, I fall asleep instead of getting stuff done. So I just finished editing a spoilery reading vlog for my patrons for our book club pick. I do that every month for them. I record a vlog of my reactions as I read our book club pick. And this month in April, we read Where the Forest Meets the Stars, and I had some thoughts along the way. So I got that done editing. It's uploading now. And then I took care of a couple things I needed to do for Nicaragua, cleaned out a few emails, and now I'm talking to you for the last few minutes here. I have plans this weekend of recording my reactions to my last two books that I read like Sarah from Sarah's Nightstand. I just finished my third one yesterday. So I do need to film my clips for that and get that edited. So that's ready to go up soon, so shortly, probably next week. And also, I would like to make a little bit more progress in Way of Kings. But I also want to read As Long as the Lemon Trees Grow before the end of the month. So that's my main goal for this weekend is As Long as the Lemon Trees Grow to read that. I'm going to start this evening and I cannot wait and then make a little bit more progress in Way of Kings because that's a chonker and I knew it would be a carryover book anyway, but I'm about halfway. So I've made good progress this month. But tomorrow is going to be a fun day because it is Independent Bookstore Day. And here in Richmond area, there are about seven, I think there are eight on the passport, but one of them is a little bit farther away than what I want to travel. Our bookstores kind of get together and create this little passport where you can get a stamp for each indie bookstore that you visit in the area. And I believe there are seven on the passport. So I'm going to do my best to go to all of them. <laughs> so that will be tomorrow, most of the day. I'm going to travel around, hopping from bookstore to bookstore. My goal is to just buy one book from each store. Uh, two of them have used books and four, I think I'm going to go to six. I think the other four are non-used bookstores, but one of them is like a children's, um, B, B, C, G, B, B, G, C, B. I forget the letters. It's four letters, B, C, B, G. I don't know. B, G, I don't know. <laughs> but that's a children's bookstore. And then we have one that's new and used, one that's also new and used, but I only just look in the new used section. Yeah. Anyways, I'll show you all that tomorrow. Um, because that's my main activity for the day. I have a few Pango orders that came in this week. So I have to get those in the mail in the morning. And then I'm going to just go bookstore hopping. I'm very excited. Very excited. So between reading and shopping, that's going to be about my weekend. I am not on teaching or worship teams for... Sunday. I'm doing check-in, I think, for kids, which just means I miss maybe the first song because I stand at the welcome desk and check kids in as they come to our kids program. So that's my role for the day on Sunday. And that's the extent of my plans for the weekend. Should be a good weekend. So I got to leave work 15 minutes early today. Woohoo! 
<laughs> um, the the mom works from home on Fridays and she got done a little early. So she's like, I'm done. You can go. I'm like, sweet. It's just 15 minutes, but it feels like a lifetime. <laughs> feels like freedom on a Friday. Woohoo. I had dinner, had some chicken tacos for dinner and watched a couple episodes of Schitt's Creek. I'm on season six. I'm nearly done. And now I'm going to do some laundry and start reading as long as the lemon trees grow and answer some comments. So I'm going to do timer sprinting for my own self until eight o'clock when I have a Patreon chat with my top tiers of patrons where I get recommendations from them and hear how everybody's reading was during the month. I love, love, love that chat every month, just connecting and getting to talk with everybody. And so that's at eight for an hour. And then I'm just going to read for the rest of the night. So during these sprints between now and eight, which I have about an hour and 20 minutes. So I'm going to do a little bit of dishes, do a little bit of laundry, do a little bit of reading and do a little bit of commenting <laughs> or answering comments, I should say. It's a thrilling Friday night around here, but at least I will be getting stuff done. Yay. Hello, friends. <laughs> it's 1045. This is the book that I'm reading tonight and I'm 75 pages in and I am invested. Holy moly. I'm watching Amy book Amy's bookish life is doing reading sprints tonight with destiny both of them are patrons of mine and dear friends of mine I love them so much I've buddy read with both of them I started watching sprints right after my monthly chat for some of my patrons and the during the first sprint I changed my laundry I found this on audio first of all which is exciting and during the first first sprint that I was there for I changed my laundry over painted my nails this navy blue color which I'm loving and listened to almost an hour of this book because I'm listening at 2.0 speed. I don't think I could speed it up anymore but it's perfect at 2.0. It's not too too fast. I was invested right away. So we're following this girl named Salama and she is about 18 years old I think and studied in school to be a pharmacist but and lives in Syria and the there's so much fighting and so much bombs and so much so many snipers just like knocking people out and she works at a hospital and has kind of been forced into becoming basically a doctor she performs surgeries she does all kinds of doctoring things even though she was never trained for that but because of necessity because people are dying left and right she's just there to help and so she is now caught in this struggle between wanting to leave the country. Most of her family has been killed already. She has her sister-in-law, who's also her very good friend, Layla, who is seven months pregnant. And she promised her brother that she would help keep Layla safe. And now she's just caught between the struggle of being needed at the hospital and helping people and like yeah just there's such an extreme lack of of people to to help others and so she knows she's making a big impact there but then also wanting to save her sister so should she leave the country with Layla so it's just this push and pull of what should I do what's the right thing to do where where Am I going to have the biggest impact? Do I sacrifice what I know I can help at the hospital in order to save my sister and, and keep my promise to my brother? Or do I keep my promise and take my sister out of the country, my sister-in-law out of the country? It's so hard. And she's so young. She's so young. Uh, but then I think she just met this kid who's going to have a big part to play in the in the story as well. She just met this boy who whose sister had um, an injury that she was able to help with. Uh, and so I have a feeling that he's going to play a big role in the rest of the story as well. I'm only, I'm only 75 pages in and there's quite a long ways to go, but I'm so excited that I found it on audio. It's really good so far. Uh, kind of heartbreaking, kind of heavy, definitely heavy, um, very fast paced, I feel like there's not, there hasn't been a ton of character development yet for Salama and, and Layla. But then there's this other character, Quaff, who's, I don't know, part ghost, part a figment of her imagination, a, a, a 
representation of her PTSD, but he's kind of this injured man that only she can see who is really pushing her to leave the country. So I don't know what that character's role is going to be in the book. He gives off like kind of creepy vibes to me, but yeah, it's just, it's just super interesting and I'm really liking it. So I'm going to continue that one. I am going to go to bed soon. It's about 10 50. I'm going to see if they're going to do a couple more sprints, but I'm just going to do maybe one more with them and read for one more sprint and then head to bed. But I did map out my route for my independent bookstores tomorrow. I know which ones I'm going to go to first as far as when they open and like ease of transportation of like getting around town without backtracking. Uh, so I'm very excited. So I will be taking you along with me to some bookstores tomorrow, but that is it for tonight. And I will talk to you tomorrow. Good night. Good morning, friends. It is Saturday morning and I'm just sitting down to eat some breakfast. It's a little bit after nine, which is perfect. I woke up a little before seven, wanted to have a video done and uploaded by eight. I got it done by 8.15. And then from eight to nine, I wanted to finish folding my laundry and get ready for the day, which I did. And now I'm just having my breakfast and then I'm gonna get my Pango books all together. And then I'm gonna head out. My breakfast of choice these days, it's a piece of avocado toast and it has grape tomatoes. And I mix in some kind of meat <laughs> with my avocado and everything but the bagel seasoning. So today my brother had made bacon yesterday, so I just grabbed one piece of bacon and chopped it up into the avocado mixture. And I use pepper jack cheese because it gives it a little extra level of flavor that's delicious. So I'm gonna finish my avocado toast and then get my pango books wrapped up and then stop at the post office and head out to my first bookstore. I have seven to try to get to today. I'm pretty sure I could get all of them. I have no clue what I'm gonna look for, but yeah. So it's been a, a decently productive morning so far. Getting that video done was a little hard at seven because I keep dozing off, <laughs> but it's done and up. Book haul is up today, yay. And now I just have to get the rest of the things done so I can get on the road. Oh, I wanted to show you. My friend Sherry sent me the, I'm gonna take it right out so I can show you. Sent me these bookshelf earrings. Aren't they so cute? they're like just bookshelves <laughs> and I love them and I thought they'd be perfect for independent bookstore day so I'm wearing my book earrings and my bookish shirt just one more page it's gonna be a good day all right first bookstore is done I just went to book people and they'd moved to a new location and it's in this plaza and they don't yet have their sign out front. They're waiting for approval and all that stuff, but I could not find it at first, but I did. Book People has a mixture of new and used, mostly mostly new, but I did find The Lions of Fifth Avenue by, by Fiona Davis. This was $5. Good find. This is not one that I own yet, but I'm excited because this is the one that takes place about the New York Public Library. So I'm very excited that I found this for five bucks. So first bookstore done. Here's my little, I picked up my little passport while I was in there and I don't think they're listed. Last year they were all listed in the passport, but they are not. Good thing I made my own list, <laughs> but I got my first little stamp book people. Yay. On to bookstore number two. It looks like the lighting is not the greatest right now, but I really love that bookstore that I just went to, the little bookshop, the little bookstore, the little bookshop, I think. Very, very sweet. It's super cute. But on the way out, you get to take a piece of cake. So it's 12.15 right now, lunch, yay. And on the way out, you got to take a free book. 
and and I they all just all that they had on them is genre at the top so I just picked one that said fiction they did have some that were historical fiction and I was thinking about those but I'm gonna open this right now and we're gonna see what I got I'm gonna open it one-handed praise <laughs> for oh no what did I get I mean worst comes to worst it can go in my pango shop because I didn't have to buy it and I'll show you what I bought in just a second Oh my word, I'm kind of excited about this. I wasn't sure I was gonna read this, but I got Our Missing Hearts by Celeste Ng. Uh, this looks, oh, the the cover is ripped right here, that's it. She did say that some of them might have some damage, but there's no, no damage to the book itself. The cover is just ripped right here, tiny little bit, but I get it, you don't wanna sell that in your store and you're selling, this is all new books in the store. Our Missing Hearts by Celeste Ng. I am one who liked but didn't love both of her other books. Little House, Little Fires Everywhere, and I don't know the other one. I forget the other one's name. I can't remember. But this is her newest, Our Missing Hearts. And I just got it for free. And a piece of cake. And I did buy, I did buy the indie bookstore um, book bag, book tote this year. Meet me at the bookstore shop indie shop local it's so cute i really like it and then my one book that i bought from this bookstore was vera wong's unsolicited advice for murderers by jesse q sutanto i've seen a lot of people reading this it takes place in chinatown in san francisco and there's an older woman who runs a tea shop and she's kind of on her own she's searching the internet to find out what her millennial son is up to because he doesn't really talk to her very much but one day she comes downstairs i think she lives above the tea shop one day she comes downstairs and there's a dead man in her tea shop like on the floor in his hand is a flash drive and she instead of leaving him like he is she quickly snatches up the flash drive before calling the police and believes that whoever killed this guy is going to come back for this flash drive and so she's just gonna watch all the customers who come into her shop and see if she can't figure out, she believes she can figure out before the police who it is that killed this guy. In the process of trying to figure out who the murderer is, she gets to know a lot of her customers and they become almost like a found family for her because she was very lonely before. So I just think that that sounds really lovely and sort of a cozy mystery. I'm excited. So I paid full price for this one. So hopefully it's good. Now I'm headed to the book exchange, which is a used bookstore. And I have a bag of 20 paperbacks that I took off of my Pango this morning because I believe that they only take paperbacks. So I have 20 paperbacks. I'm going to see how much I get in store credit for that and then I'm gonna get some books it might take me a little longer in that one because it is a used bookstore and it's probably the biggest of all the ones that I'm gonna go to today the biggest bookstore so hopefully I can get a little bit of clips in there there's been a lot of people at all the places I've gone so far and I have been a little bit uncomfortable trying to film when there's so many people in there so I have I've tried we'll see we'll see what I can do in the next few but two down five to go let's get moving store the book exchange it's huge and I got 40 something dollars of credit <laughs> so how they do it is the books are half off their listed price and you can use your credit for another half off of that price so it's like 75% off makes the books about that so I'm shopping I found a puzzle and one book so far I'm in the kids section right now I'll do a little walkthrough this one's not as crowded so I'll do a little walkthrough in a moment but Yay! Try not to spend too much time here because I have three more stores to go to. Four more. This is only number three. Yikes! <laughs> All right, 
bookshop number three is complete and I knew that that would because that was going to be the one that I had a hard time sticking with a small amount of books so I like I said I got $40 worth of store credit and you could see the bookstore I took a little peruse of all the shelves I mean I didn't look at every single shelf so they had puzzles they had books let's go ahead and show you what I got so I got three puzzles I like Charles Wysowski Wysowski those like town looking ones I got I like that one a lot I got this one that's called Imaginarium it's upside down here you go bookshelves like kind of magical bookshelves and I got this one with mystery covers which is a lot of fun so I got those three puzzles and so I my total was like 50 something and they used 20 something 24 something of my credit and then 28 I had to pay or I had to pay $28 but I got those three puzzles in one two three four five six books which is not bad so I did pick up two short story collections by Ella Montgomery um, Akin to Anne and After Many Days. I've never heard of either of them. A Akin to Anne are going to be orphan stories. And then After Many Days are kind of stories of men and women who through kindness, self-control, patience, or hard-won humility achieve various kinds of reconciliation with individuals or the world after many days. I'm excited to read some Ella Montgomery short stories. I think that's one of the prompts for Ella Montgomery May. I did pick up a Charles Martin that was on my to want to read list, The Waterkeeper. And as I was checking out, the lady was like, that is my favorite author. This book is so good. I'm like, oh, sweet. So I'm excited to read that, Charles Martin. I got a bookish book because, of course I did. This is Aunt Mary Alice Monroe, The Book Club, about a group of people who come together over a book club and the power of friendship with tenderness, honesty, and understanding. So I just think it's going to be almost like a found family around this book club. And we're going to get to know all the five different people who are a part of the book club um lynn austin if i were you this came in today she said i was so excited this was on my anticipated reads list from 2021 i believe or 2020 i forget but i'm excited to find it christian fiction i don't remember what it's about and then i did pick up a heather weber um the lights of sugarberry cove a charming novel of family love and the healing power of a little lake magic I feel like this would be a fun one to read when I go up to my mom's in the summertime and hang out at the lake. But I really liked Midnight at the Blackbird Cafe was by her. Um, she has another one south of the Buttonwood Tree, which I haven't read. So I don't think this is part of a series. I hope it's not. But yeah, I'm excited to read this one too. It's really hot in my car right now. So I have a half hour drive to go back up to the city. And I'm like south of Richmond right now. But all the rest are along the one road, like a couple miles apart. But I should be able to pop in and out of them pretty quickly. They're not very big bookstores. So it's 1.30. I'm going to make my way up there. I really need some lunch, but one of my April goals, my April like health goal for myself was to not eat and not eat out at all. Fast food really, but really any restaurants. And my one exception was my lunch out that I do with girls from my church, which was last Sunday. So I don't really want to stop at a restaurant, but I may stop at a grocery store and grab like a prepared salad or something and a drink at a grocery store because I'm allowed to get groceries, right? I'll just call it groceries and it'll be lunch. So we'll see what I can come up with, but <laughs> I need to get some food in my body because it's 1.30 and I'm getting a little hungry. But I'm gonna drive and continue listening to As Long As The Lemon Trees Grow. It's so good. Salama just met uh, the boy character that's in the description, in the summary. And he is determined to stay in Syria because he just loves his country. And finally, there's a chance for freedom. And he is recording, taking pictures and recordings of the different protests. But that's where the government is like killing people and arresting people and stuff. So it's very dangerous. And he has a younger brother and sister and Salama is like, be careful. Like, don't do that. You should get out of the year. You should leave because you need to think about them. But she is still struggling on her own to figure out what she wants to do um, because she's working at the hospital and feeling useful. But her sister friend, I think I've already said this, but she's still struggling with her own decision. But after talking with him, she seems determined now to leave. So we'll see what happens. I'm not even halfway through, so we'll see. All right, I gotta go get the air conditioning going because it's hot. <laughs> All right, bye.
So I just went to two more and sorry that all these clips are in the car. That's just the way it is. These two were in this section of Richmond called Carytown, which is a lot of fun. There's just like this street, Cary Street, full of shops and restaurants. And it's always very crowded on Saturdays. And I had to park in this little parking garage, which there's only one exit, like one entrance and exit. So you, it's just confusing and crowded. And anyways, I went to two bookstores during that time. And hey, remember when I said, remember when I said I was only gonna get one book at each place? That flew out the window. <laughs> Both of these places I bought two books, which is not too bad. At BBGB, which is a children's bookstore, I ended up getting an adult nonfiction and a YA. I didn't even get a kid's book, but I have bought kid's books today, so I'm fine. But I bought African Town by Irene Latham and Charles Waters. This is inspired by the true story of the last African slave ship. I am gonna probably listen to this on audio because Angel, one of my patrons, told me that it's really good on audio. So I do wanna listen to this, but I just feel like it's gonna be a book that I'm going to want to have. It's written in verse. It's YA. It's not going to be a very long audiobook, but I just think it's going to be a harrowing and emotional and powerful story. So I'm really glad to have found that one. And then this adult nonfiction is not a memoir or biography. It's about weather. But I was reading the little blurb about this in the Indie Next magazine that I get at independent bookstores, but this is called The Secret World of Weather, How to Read Signs in Every Cloud, Breeze, Hill, Street, Plant, Animal, and Dewdrop by Tristan Gooley. And it's just about weather, which I love weather. I'm not obsessed with the weather, but I do, I always loved learning about weather when I was in school. And I just think this is gonna be a lot of fun to read and learn. And I heard that it has humor in it. You just kind of learn about the weather through other clues in nature. It's gonna be a nature nonfiction. Who even am I that I spent money on that today? But it just sounds so interesting to me. I couldn't resist. And those were from BBGB. And then in shelf life books, I didn't even look downstairs at the new stuff. I only went upstairs into the used area but I found two up there as well. One of them, Ginny Moon, this one was $5.50 and the other one was $9.95, but I'll show you in a second. So the first one I found is Ginny Moon by Benjamin Ludwig. This is on my want to read list. So it's one that I already had my eye on and I don't even really know what it's about except for it's about this girl named Ginny Moon. Full of big heart and unexpected humor, Ludwig's debut introduces the lovable, wholly original Ginny Moon who discovers a new meaning of family on her unconventional journey home. Yes, please. That sounds so good. And then, I'm so excited that I found this. Julia and the Shark in a hardcover. I, this is the edition that I wanted. The black with the yellow. Black and gray with the yellow. Mm, this is by Kieran Millwood Hargrave and... Tom DeFreston, I think, does the, the pictures. There's illustrations all throughout. This is a middle grade that deals with grief, and that's all I need to know. It also deals with a shark, like the sea, and there are illustrations all the way through. I think this is going to be a tearjerker, and I can't wait to read it, and I'm so glad that I bought it. <laughs> all right, two left, and then I'm going to go home. Oh, and by the way, two things. Here's the other part of my lunch. Cupcake. Thank you, BBGB for lunch part two. So I had chocolate pound cake for lunch part one, and now chocolate cupcake for lunch part two. But I did wanna show you at the one bookstore that I went to, uh, Midlothian Book Exchange, they kind of snuck this into my bag as I was checking out, and they're like, thanks for shopping indie bookstores. I have no idea what it is. I'm kind of hoping it's candy. <laughs> I like their stickers. And a lot of the stores today have had these raffles that I've signed up for. So that would be kind of fun if I win something. We'll see. But what is this? It is candy. <laughs> a little, a little bag of treats. Two little, two little dum dum lollipops, and some chocolates. I'm glad I brought this with me. I thought ahead and brought put this in my bag instead of leaving it here in my car because it's kind of warm today. It's 73, so it's not super hot. But my car gets hot every time I leave. <laughs> And come back to it. So I have a Milky Way and just a couple little mini, mini candy candies there. So that's lunch part three. <laughs> lunch of champions today. All right, I gotta go because people are probably waiting for my spot. I will check in. Two more stores to go. Hi. 
How are you? Right, I am now back in my comfy chair. I did not want to talk about the last two in my car again. <laughs> so I'll tell you about the last two bookstores now. One was Fountain Books and it was crowded in there. I did get a clip as I walked in, but that's about it because it was really crowded in there. But I did pick up one of my anticipated reads, The Last Heir to Blackwood Library by Hester Fox. I feel like this will be a good october -y read. It's gonna be potentially kind of gothic feeling, maybe some ghosty things bit of a mystery. I was particularly looking for paperbacks because I'm not paying $30 for one book. Sorry, hardcovers, but it's not happening. And then the last store was Book Bar, the Book Bar. And this is a Black-owned business. It's, it's also rather small. And I was talking to the owner because she's like, yeah, my shelves are bare. She had a lot of foot traffic today and people bought stuff, which is fabulous. And I didn't film inside of that one because Sadiqa Johnson was coming tonight to talk about House of Eve, her new book. So I've already seen Sadiqa Johnson, so I didn't plan to stay or anything like that. But they had chairs all set up and they were bringing in balloons and a cake and getting ready for that. So I didn't want to stick around for too long, but I did look through the shelves and I found this book that I've never heard of before, Red Island House by Andrea Lee. This takes place in Madagascar, which I thought was pretty cool. I think it's historical fiction. Um, an unforgettable travel epic of love, betrayal, and colliding cultures set on the exotic African island of Madagascar. Has anyone heard of this one before, Red Island House? So all together, I brought home 15 books today, three puzzles, and I went to seven bookstores, and it took me five hours, and I am tuckered out. Had a lot of talking with people. Oh, I forgot to tell you, I am a Patreon supporter of the Currently Reading Book Podcast, and they call us Bookish Friends, and I was talking with this girl in one of the stores, and we learned that we were both bookish friends. So I got a picture with her, Shelby. Um, so Shelby, if you did subscribe and you're watching this, it was really nice to meet you today. Um, so that was a lot of fun to make a connection um, about a podcast that we love and about books and saw her in two different bookstores early on in the day. So that was a lot of fun to chat with her and get to know a local bookish person. It's 5.30 now and my evening is going to be pretty much in this chair. <laughs> I feel like I got my peopling done for the day. I do not plan on working out. I'm just gonna read as long as the lemon trees grow. I'm gonna log these books. This is counting as my haul. So I'm gonna put all the books that I got today into Goodreads and find homes for them on my shelves and do a little bit of like cleaning up around the house and stuff. Jordan finished the dishes. Yes. <laughs> I did some this morning and he finished them up. So that's great. I have to clean up in my room a little bit, but hopefully I'm just going to get a lot of reading done tonight and I'm fine with that. I might still try to go for a walk because it is really beautiful out today. So we'll see. But I had such a fun indie bookstore day. Such a fun day. So apparently <laughs> talking to people and going to lots of bookstores wiped me out today it's only 9.30 and I am not normally an early to bed person, but I am tuckered out. Oh my word. I'm just very, very tired. So I'm going to bed early. I will probably wake up at the crack of dawn, but that's just what's going to happen because I'm tired and I need to go to bed. But I made it to 60 something percent into as long as the lemon trees grow. I have welled up with tears once. I've gotten angry. It's just heartbreaking to hear what happened to so many people in Syria. It's just really, really sad. Um, but I'm going to listen a little bit longer until I kind of can't keep my eyes open. And I will definitely be able to finish it tomorrow. I think I only have about four hours left on the audiobook. And I am speeding it up. So it shouldn't quite take me four hours. But it's time for bed. So good night. <laughs> I'll see you tomorrow. Good morning. I'm at church doing kids check-in today and about to go upstairs in a few minutes. But they've started service upstairs. I just have to wait until all the kids come in. I think I saw one more coming. 
Hi friends. I am home from church. I'm changed into a different shirt because I was just filming. I filmed my April wrap up. I filmed my wrap up of my read like Sarah. I filmed my intro to my read like Tiffany because I chose the books that I'm going to read like her. And I think that's it. I think that's the only things that I filmed. Three things. Um, so I'm going to work on some editing for a bit. I'm actually going to go change into a, like a t-shirt and at six tonight, I have my book club for my Patreon. So I'm looking forward to that conversation. That's always really good. Um, but I don't have anything else today. So I need to do a little bit of cleaning in my bedroom and kind of setting myself up for success for the week, making some plans for food and, and stuff like that. It is a rainy, overcast, rainy off and on day today. So I probably will not go for a walk. I'm just going to kind of relax. Honestly, I've went to bed so early last night and woke up with a cough and a, and a runny nose. I don't know if it's just allergies with whatever the rain is putting into the air and or like the temperature changing. I don't know what it is, but I don't feel 100% today. I don't feel horrible, but I don't feel great. Um, so to to just sit around and relax feels wonderful to me. Before I go change though, I just want to say that I finished as long as the lemon, lemon trees grow this morning. This was such a good read. This had me weeping. And that might also be what I mean, what helped me to have a headache and like runny nose and stuff because I was seriously crying so hard this morning listening to this. I'm like, I probably shouldn't be doing this before church because it's putting me in a really sad mood. Oh, it was a doozy. It was so intense. And this is a five-star prediction, so I'm not going to tell you my final thoughts on it. And I did the same thing in my wrap up. I mean, I'm not going to tell you my final rating, but I will say that this was a powerful read. It did feel YA. There was a few times, especially in the first part of the book that I was like, mm, I'm not sure I'm going to love this as much as everyone else has seen me to love it. But by the end, I was invested. I was very uh, um, interested in Salama's story and her struggle to, to figure out what to do. I There was a character in here that sh that was part of her like a vision that she kept seeing, but it was like a person that she kept seeing. And we learn who that person is and the, and the impact and like why he's there. Why is she seeing this vision? Um, and I thought that that was really brilliant. I just really liked this a lot. And it was very emotional. It was very, very emotional. <sighs> I love books set in the Middle East. And in Syria in particular, I feel like I want to learn more because like they were saying, she just kept saying, like, does nobody care? Does nobody care that for years the government is, like, bombing people and used chemical warfare on baby, like, on kids? And, like, government soldiers came into the hospital where she worked at one point and just, like, shot children. Like, what on earth? What on earth? She's like, why does nobody care that this is happening? Oh, my goodness. It's very intense. And I care. <laughs> I was weeping. I care a lot. And it just makes me want to learn more because I feel like knowledge and information. I mean, this is fiction. I understand that this is fiction, but it also is happening, like has happened. And there are places in the world where horrors like this are reality for so many people. And it breaks my heart. <laughs> I don't even... It, it's just really, it's difficult to read, but I think books like this are super important. So I'm very glad I finished that. And now I have the rest of the day. So I think I'm going to hit up a way of, hit up. I think I'm going to hit up Wave Kings for a little bit and get back into that story a bit. I haven't touched it in a few days because I needed to finish my third Read Like Sarah book. And then I wanted to finish this one as well. But I think technically my TBR for April is complete. Did I honestly read everything I put on my TBR? I think I did. That's exciting. And I mean, I didn't finish Way of Kings. And I read a couple others that were not on my TBR, like two, <laughs> two others. <laughs> but I'm really pleased about that. So now I might either read one of my library books that I have checked out, or Way of Kings, and that's it for the day, or get started on my May TBR. Why not? I mean, why not? It starts tomorrow, right? But I'm going to go grab some lunch. It's like 1.45. But I don't like to eat when I come home from church until after I've filmed. It's like motivation for me to get stuff filmed. So I'm done filming now. I can get cozy, watch a couple episodes of Schitt's Creek, and eat some lunch. That's the plan. And then I'm going to get set up for the week, do a little bit of cleaning in my room and in here a little bit, 
and and then read figure out what I'm gonna read next <laughs> I don't know <laughs> all right I'll talk to you guys later hello my friends it is 8 50 and I'm almost ready for bed I don't know what is up with me I just think I'm not quite feeling 100% today. I've been sneezing and coughing all day long. And so I probably will go to bed early. I'm going to work on editing a little bit first. But had a really great book club chat with my patrons about where the forest meets the stars. And then I've just been sitting here for the last half hour or so listening to The Way of Kings, getting back into that story. I decided not to start something early, but to just keep trucking away at The Way of Kings, which I am really enjoying. It's just massive. It's just a really long book. Uh, but I'm going to wrap things up here. I think it was a fantastic weekend to all the indie bookstores and lots of new books coming into my house and some puzzles. And Jordan made dinner tonight, which was wonderful. And got a book finished as long as the lemon trees grow. And yeah, it was just a really, really good weekend. Rainy. It rained most of today. and It rained most of Friday, but Saturday was gorgeous. Thank you so much for hanging out with me for the weekend. And I would love to chat with you down in the comments about anything you saw in this video or anything that you want to chat about. Thank you so much for watching and hanging out with me. Let me know if you visited any indie bookstores yesterday or over the weekend. And I will talk to you in another video very soon. Bye.